She was quiet. Yeah. Didn't really notice her. No. Not shy, exactly. No, not shy. But not loud, either. No, not loud. The sort of person that if someone at school said, you know, Grace, you'd say, who's Grace? Who's Grace? And they'd say, Grace Fremantle. Grace Fremantle. And you'd say, who's Grace Fremantle? Exactly. And they'd say, she's the one in 11F. The one in 11F. And you'd say, oh, the one with the hair and the glasses. And they'd say, no, that's Miriam. That's Miriam. And then, after a few tries, you'd get it. Yeah. You'd remember who she was. You know the sort. Not that good looking. No. Not bad looking, though. No. Not clever, like clever, clever. No. You know, not in the top sets or anything like that. Nothing like that. But not the bottom sets, either. No. Not a joker. No. Or a troublemaker. No. Or a loner. No. She had friends. Yeah, she had friends. They weren't popular. Unpopular. No, not unpopular. No. Grace was just kind of... You know those American kids that go into high schools and shoot everyone dead? And the teachers go, no big surprise. He hasn't spoken for two years. He's been wearing the same black sweatshirt for 11 months and his chemistry book is full of drawings of guns. Well, Grace wasn't like that. She wasn't like that. She was average. Yeah, average. Grace Fremantle was totally average. Totally average. I'm Grace Fremantle. And I was totally average. My dad meets with Grace's dad, Paul. My dad says Paul's a good bloke. My dad's a twitcher, which means he's a bird watcher. Yeah, cringe, totally. I hear you. Paul's a bird watcher too. The pair of them go down to the marshes every Sunday with their binoculars and get a fry up at Pauline's cafe. And they talk about sparrows and bobtailed tits. That's a real bird. And that's its real name. Last year, Paul, Grace's dad, posted a video of Grace throwing a tantrum when she was little. I am five years old. I'm wearing my Little Miss Sunshine T-shirt. Dad is playing with his new phone. We're supposed to be going to the park. I ask him. He says he's busy. But he promised. Before, he promised. And that's not fair. It's a funny video. I can't deny that. Grace is screaming on the floor, little arms and legs all over the place. I am fire and fury inside. And then she gets up and trips on Lego. And if you've ever fallen on Lego before, you know that hurts like hell. And Paul, Grace's dad, is filming the whole thing on his new phone, giggling away. Not in a horrible way, just, you know, a dad way. I am red and blood and pus inside. Grace's mum... Jen, she comes in to see what's going on, and she tries to reason with Grace, but there's no point. I am blast and yellow and clash inside. Jen tries to comfort her, but Grace just kicks her. I am rupture and burst and storm inside. And then Paul says, your behavior is completely inappropriate for a young lady. And then Grace roars in his face, like actually roars, like properly roars. And then she's sent to her room to think about what she's done. And then Jen turns to Paul and says, what did we do to deserve her? And they both giggle. Paul found the video last year and posted it on his Facebook with the title, Epic Disgrace, which is a kind of funny play on her name. Grace, Epic Disgrace, Epic Disgrace. It's kind of funny, but crap of him. All the parents thought it was hilarious, my dad included. I'm not saying that Paul, Grace's dad, had anything to do with that day in PE and what happened and everything. But, I mean, I wouldn't like it if my dad did something like that. It's not a very adult, responsible, grown-up thing to do.
It's December. Cold. Evening. Seven o'clock. I'm at home. Dad is still at work. Mum has just got home from her shift and is eating a sandwich with some chutney that she found in the back of the cupboard. I'm in my bedroom. I'm staring at my GCSE revision timetable. My revision timetable is colour-coded and covered in fluorescent post-its that Dad nicked from work. My parents are big on revision and working hard and me being the best possible version of myself. My revision timetable is a work of art. Mum takes a bite of her sandwich and shouts upstairs. Grace, are you revising? I like the way the pink and yellow post-its look next to each other. Grace, did you hear me? They remind me of sweets. Grace? Like rhubarb and custards. I really hope you're revising, Grace. Like the rhubarb and custards I had when we went to the seaside when I was seven. It's maths and physics tonight, right? When we walked along the beach and found shells. And Dad ran into the sea, and I had a 99 ice cream, and Mum ruffled my hair and snuck a bite of my flake. But I didn't mind, because the sun was shining, and the sea was wavy. I'm not going to nag you, Grace. Remember, it's your future. And that's when I first feel it. Your future? In my belly, I feel... It's your future. A presence. A gnawing. A squirming. It's small, like a cherry pit, or... A baby shrimp. It's small, whatever it is. But it's here. It's definitely here. Grace Fremantle. Grace Fremantle in PE. <laughs> More like Grace Fremental. Grace Free Mental? <laughs> Do you get it? You don't get it. I met Grace on my first day at primary. We were best friends. We are best friends. Were, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to sense, anyway. I love primary. We all love primary. Every Thursday, our teacher, Mrs. Drake, took us up into the school field and told us to look up at the sky. She told us about Columbus clouds and stress clouds and nimbus clouds. She told us to close our eyes and listen to the music of the wind in the trees. She told us to lie down and feel the heat of the earth on our skin. She said, isn't the world a wonderful place? And we all nodded, bellies down on the hot soil. One Thursday, I counted 17 different things in the grass. Grace counted 17 different things too. We both saw an iridescent bug with bright green wings. It was beautiful. I miss being seven. I miss counting interesting things in the grass. I'm in the library. I'm reading a book about, well, I don't know what it's about because I'm not reading it really. It's for English and it's boring and I'd much rather be reading one of my own books than a book that someone tells me I have to read. I flick through Insta on my phone. My insides feel hot. I feel... My stomach feels wormy, like the night before an exam or when your friends don't respond to your post, or when a teacher says, can I speak to you after class? It's pulsing in my body. I can feel it pulsing in my body. Pulse, pulse, pulse. I'm not pregnant if that's what pulse. you think. I've never had pulse. sex, never even been pulse. near any sperm. Pulse. And it's not another Jesus, just pulse. to be clear. I don't know what pulse. it is, but it's not pulse. that. Pulse. There's a special school assembly with a special guest. The special guest is a famous barrister who went to the private school across town, which has its own theatre and a cricket pitch and ancient oak trees. Our school doesn't have its own theatre or cricket pitch or ancient oak trees. Our school has one between two books and teachers that go off sick. I want you to look around you. The barrister is very passionate. I want you to look to your left, not your right. Welcome to your competition. My womb contracts. You will sit your GCSEs at the same time. You will sit your A-levels together. You will apply to university at the same time. My womb judders. But what I want to know is what makes you different from everyone else here. It expands in my womb. You're at a crucial point in your lives. It expands. Every choice you make now will impact on your future. It grows to the size of a chestnut. Let's get real here. Do you want to own a house? Well, how are you going to get it? It's not painful. It's not not painful either. It feels sort of 
How are you going to manage that? Because houses are expensive. Unknowable. You should be thinking about the things you want in the future now. What is your plan? It feels like the worst is yet to come. What is your five-year plan? Or the best is yet to come. You're in charge of your destiny. It grows to the size of a mouse. With hard work and determination, you can make your dreams come true. It grows to the size of a hamster. Harness your power. By the end of assembly, it's the size of a newborn puppy. A small one. The hard work starts now. A Jack Russell, maybe? The competition started yesterday. Or a West Highland Terrier. Welcome to the real world. Yes. It's like a West Highland Terrier puppy scrambling around inside of me. My memory of Grace Fremantle before that day in PE is kind of hazy. She was in a couple of my classes and, yeah, nothing much, really. Just kind of, no, nothing. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, that wasn't her. Oh, yeah, I remember something. There was this one time, right? It was break. Me and my lot were hanging out by the art block. And my mate, Ali, he was looking and laughing at his phone. And I was like, what's that? And he passed it over. Someone had posted a video who, of Janice Levy, who's in the year below, running the 100 meter sprint in the Borough Championships. Just so you know, a bit of context in that, Janice Levy was the fastest runner at our school. She was like, superhuman. She broke all the running records all the time. She was in the local paper and some famous coach came from Manchester, especially to see her. There was even some chat about the next Olympics. Anyway, so in the video, Janice is running the race for the school really fast. In the video, you can see quite clearly that Janice isn't wearing a sports bra. She's just got her normal bra on and her boobs are really bouncing because she's so fast and her boobs are big. They're flying all over the place and someone's put up a title that doesn't say superhuman woman slays competition. Instead, they've put the fastest tits in the bar. <laughs> I don't think it's that funny, but I don't know. I don't want to see a sort of half laugh. Anyway, then Grace Fremantle walks by. Ali passes it to her. Grace looks. Grace doesn't say anything, but she doesn't laugh either. She passes the phone back to Ali and goes into art class. I told my form tutor about the video because I thought an adult should know what was going on. I don't know if he did anything. Yeah, that's my Grace story. Sorry, it's a bit anticlimax, isn't it? It's more of a Janice story than a Grace story. Janice refused to come to school after that. Sorry, yeah, sorry. When it is asleep, it throbs in time with my heartbeat. It's like we're one thing. I know we are not one thing. It plays around. Sometimes I think it has feathers. Sometimes I think it has fur. Sometimes the spikes like a porcupine wrestles and tumbles around inside my body. I can feel its spine up against my kidneys. It was February when I first noticed Grace being in all four. My mum had just gotten engaged to John, aka the dickhead. She was trying to get me on side, so she gave me 10 quid to get dinner as a treat. Me and Grace was in Pizza Town waiting for our pizzas. Mine an extra hot Hawaiian with olives because I'm half Italian and I love pineapples. Grace was having a margarita. Classic. Pizza Town isn't a place that's too bothered about cleansiness. The tables are bare sticky and the floor, well, you don't want to think too hard about that. Let's just say the moppers are strange to that floor, but the pizzas are banging, so swings and roundabouts in it. There's this TV up in the corner, right up by the ceiling. Not a flat screen one, one of those old ones with a big bum at the back. Some bare, boring news was in. Grace was watching it. Church and a man in an inflatable boat on the sea. The waves are enormous. The boat is sinking. It scuttles down from my belly, across my pelvis, and into my thigh. Katy Perry was blaring out at like a million decibels, making the music like the most boringest music video ever. And Grace just kept watching it. A woman slips from a boat. She's holding a baby in her arms. She's holding her baby above her head as she's dragged into the water. Its body quivers inside my thigh. 
My mum bet the dickhead for his for her mate Sally. She used to date him but dumped him because he was too high maintenance. I didn't like him when I first met him. He was cold to me when my mum went out the room and a bit nasty to her too when she didn't do as he wanted. A terrified man reaches for the screaming baby and passes it to a terrified teenage girl. It pushes its tiny skull up against my kneecap. I tried to say something to her like, look at the warning signs, but she just said, don't you want me to be happy? And well, there's nothing you can really say to that. And then she gave me 10 quid, so here we are in pizza town, waiting. Me worrying about my mum and the dickhead and Grace staring at the TV like she'd never seen a TV before. The woman disappears under a crash of foam and bubbles. I said, what are you planning on doing next year? It taps at my kneecap. Tap. I said, what are you, are you planning on seeing at school? Tap. I put my hand above my knee. I massage the skin. I try to soothe it. I said, Grace. Grace. The boat upturns. The children, women and men scream and shout. They cling to the inflatable which grows soft under their touch. My leg violently jerks hits the underneath of the table. And you'll never believe what happens next. She just gets up and leaves. She leaves me in pizza town without even saying goodbye. Like, are you joking? Are you actually joking? Who does that? She wasn't even my first choice to get pizza with. I only asked her because no one else wanted to go. I crouch behind the bins out the back. I take a deep breath. I look at my leg. Just above my knee, it is straining against my skin. I can see the outline of its face. There's a beak. It has a beak. It has a beak and is straining against my skin. My mum went ahead and married that dickhead. Grace was in my maths class. I liked her. She was nice. Sometimes she'd catch me looking at her in class and she'd smile over at me. And sometimes I'd catch her looking at me and I'd smile over at her. There was something between us. You can feel it, can't you? You can feel it when there's something there. I was going to ask her if she wanted to go somewhere or come over to mine or hang out or whatever. But then she changed, and I didn't. I wish I'd... She was nice. I really wish I'd... I wish I'd said to her, you can talk to me if you want. No pressure. I'm here if you need to talk. I wish I'd done that. We were in geography. It was proper boring. Grace sat on our table. Seat in plan. Between... Miss Jarvis loves a seating plan. Miss Jarvis is scary. In it, the way her eyes bulge out her head when she's annoyed. That lesson, Miss Jarvis was going on about carbon emissions. Miss Jarvis is always going on about carbon emissions. Miss Jarvis really hates carbon emissions. It is asleep. It is curled around my heart. It is important to understand that the Earth's climate is changing at exponential rate. It wakes up. I don't even know about what a carbon emission is. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We can see this in higher temperatures all over the world, along with rising sea levels. It wants something. Geography isn't my thing. Art is my thing. You're sick at art. Thanks, hon. We can see this in more frequent, severe floods, droughts and storms. I don't know what it wants. Miss Jarvis was droning on, so I took out my phone to show the others a bag I liked. I passed my phone to Grace under the table. We can see this in species extinction. Grace looked at the phone. I remember, because I wanted to see what was on it, but I couldn't. Fugita is the world's rarest marine mammal. Grace was gripping the phone like. Yeah, like... The Fugita will be extinct in the next five years. Its body tenses. The Miss Jarvis put up a picture of the fish thing she's been going on about. This small porpoise was only discovered in 1958, and here we are, 60 years later, about to lose them forever. Grace suddenly looked up. Grace was still gripping the phone like... It scuttles along the length of my torso. And I wanted my phone back. Climate change is a catastrophe in waiting. Its body bristles. Yeah, cos here, if the teachers see your phone, they take it. All the consequences can already be seen. It starts climbing up my ribcage. Yeah, they lock your phone in a safe. Around the world, we see wars and starvation. It pulls itself up inside my ribcage. I, I think it has teeth. And your mum or dad or older sister or whoever has to come and collect it. Around the world, we see wars and starvation. My dad had to get my phone. It was livid. And this is only going to get worse. 
There's a noise. I really wanted to get my phone off Grace before Miss Jarvis saw her. There's a noise inside of me. Twelve years to do something before a catastrophe is inevitable. So I reached over and grabbed it out of her hand. I can hear it inside of me. Just 12 years. And that's when she went really weird. It wasn't my fault. Not saying it was. Oh, I thought you were. Well, it was no one's fault, or it might have been someone's fault, but we don't know, do we? I can hear it from inside of me. Then Grace leaned over the table like... Yeah. 12 years for global leaders to take action. And I said, what's up, Grace? And my question to you is... It's making this noise like... What can we do about it? And I said, Grace, are you all right? Does anyone have any ideas? I pull my jumper around me so no one else can hear. Thing Grace did a very ungrace thing. I don't know how to stop it from... Very ungrace. I can't make it... Totally ungrace. They're gonna hear. She started... They're all gonna hear. Yeah, she started... I can't let them hear it. She started singing. It ain't over till it's over. What on earth is... And it was proper funny seeing Miss Jarvis's eyes bulge out all over the place. So I... It ain't over till it's over. And me. It ain't over till it's over. Until we all were. It ain't over till it's over. Stop that right now. It ain't now. over till I say. It ain't no, over till it's, it's over. over. It, it ain't over till I say. I said stop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we realised. And that's when I yeah, realised. When we realised. I realised... There was something, something seriously up with, with Grace. Grace. The it wants to be heard. Grace. Grace Fremantle. The it hisses and spits and growls. Grace Fremantle in 11F. When I speak, <laughs> the it cracks through all of my words. I stop speaking. Me and Grace just got each other, right from the start. The first day we met new one, she was really kind to me. Was, is, yeah. She always made me feel like it's okay to be me. And a lot of times, I feel horrible being me. I hate my body. I keep my mouth shut. And when I look around me, I see loads of other people hating their bodies too. And their bodies look just fine to me. I keep my mouth shut. After school, we'd always go to Grace's house and make macaroni and cheese, which was our thing. We love, no, loved making macaroni and cheese. I keep my mouth shut. Then she just kind of disappeared. Not literally, she was still around, but she wasn't, if you know what I mean. She stopped communicating. I keep my mouth shut. She started saying after school when everyone was long gone and getting the bus home when everyone was long gone. I keep my mouth shut. Stop asking me to come around to her house. Stop texting, Snapchatting, WhatsApping, Instagram, all of it. Everything finished. I keep my mouth shut. I missed her. I keep my mouth shut. I still miss her. I keep my mouth shut. One day at school, I said to her, do you want to walk home together today? I keep my mouth shut. I said, we can go to yours and make macaroni and cheese like we I used to. I keep my mouth shut. I said, we can just hang out. I keep my mouth shut. And she didn't say anything. Keep my mouth shut. I took a big breath and asked her what I've been wanting to ask her for weeks. I keep my mouth shut. Grace, don't you like me anymore? And she didn't say anything. I keep my mouth shut. I'm at home. I'm standing at the kitchen sink, getting a drink of water. The it is resting. It occasionally rolls over and stretches along my abdomen. My mum comes in and puts the radio on to listen to the news. The latest victim of knife crime has been named as 14-year-old David Sanderson. The it tenses. Witnesses say they saw David Sanderson being chased by three or four other youths. The victim was said to have run into a local shop for help. I don't know why, but I go right up to where the radio is. Suddenly, without warning, the it moves up over my shoulder and squeezes into my arm. I turn up the radio. A local mother comes on. We're scared for our children. There is a sharp pain in my hand. We're scared when our children go to school. There's a tiny cut in my hand. We're scared when our children are out of sight. There is blood in the palm of my hand. We need someone to do something. There is something sticking out the palm of my hand. He was 14, just a kid. It looks like a thorn from a rose. 
but it's bright blue. That poor boy lying in his own blood. It's a claw. Why is no one doing anything? There is a claw sticking out the palm of my hand. Why does no one care? I tried to push the claw back in with my fingertip. That poor boy, terrified, screaming, knowing he's going to die. He won't go back in. Screaming for his mum, the fifth teenage boy to be killed round here. I go to the bathroom. And no one in charge seems to give a toss. I close the bathroom door. That poor boy. I take my shoe off. I hit the palm of my hand with the shoe like a hammer. The claw resists. The claw resists. That poor, poor boy. I wrap boy. the tape around my hand. Remember that history lesson we had about the Middle East? Yeah, boring. With Mr Logan? Yeah, dickhead. And we had that test? Yeah, easy. And I was sat right next to Grace Fremantle. Yeah, Fremantle. It's not nice. True, though. I mean, she didn't even answer one question. She just sat there looking at the paper, like, she didn't even pick up her pen. For me, it was hard to pick up a pen. There's woody gloves on. Joke. I don't think you should be joking about her. I mean, like, I don't think we should be making fun of her. I mean, I wouldn't like it if it happened to me and everyone was okay. just like... Okay, okay, God. Remember that picture of the boy um, in Syria? Yeah, well, when Grace saw that picture, she, like, she started to shake. The pain inside is... Little boy sits on an orange chair. The chair is too big for him. The Aleppo has been bombed. The little boy is busted from the exploded buildings. His hair is matted and chalky. One half of his face is covered in blood. The little boy sat naked on the chair with his hands on his knees. He is in silence and traumatised. The whole desk started moving, like, her whole body started to shake. And, like, I asked her if she was all right, but she didn't answer. And I tried to get Mr Logan's attention, but she sort of looked at me in that way, you know, like, like I shouldn't. I mean, I should have done something. I mean, maybe if I told Mr Logan, then that thing in PE might not ever have happened. I mean, it was obvious that something was up with her, and I didn't do anything. I should have done something. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. No. I don't know. I can't stop watching the news. I can't stop reading the news. I can't stop listening to the news. I don't want to. I shut my eyes. I cover my ears. I don't want to know. Food banks. Cyclones. Arms dealings. The it crawls up through my chest. Its spiky head reaches my throat. It wriggles up. <coughs> its beak is stuck in the back of my throat. <coughs> its beak opens like a baby bird wanting to be fed. It speaks, the it speaks, and it says, what is next? I gulp and I gulp and I gulp it back down until it's forced back down my throat, back down into my body, pulsing and vibrating in the pit of my stomach. I put tape over my mouth. Grace man. Grace. Yeah, Grace man. With the... In the... Balaclava. Nah, that's a pastry thing. No, that's... Nah, that's a Greek, Turkish, Arabic pastry thing. No, that's baklava. Now that's definitely... Oh, yeah, you're right. My year four teacher used to bring baklava in at the end of term. Sick. I cover my face. So Grace comes in wearing her... Balaclava. And it wasn't winter or nothing. They all take the piss. I don't give a shit. I don't know how she got away with it. They put me in isolation for two days with all my trainers and had a proper reason as well. My school shoes were getting fixed. Yeah, I remember. Just because I didn't have a no. Yeah, I remember. What an extreme reaction. Yeah, I remember. At break time, I go to the toilet. I take my clothes off. I watch it move around inside my body, bumping and poking and pushing at my skin. It has grown so big. A long, low growl rumbles through my blood, muscle and gristle. What is next? So Grace Fremantle comes in wearing her baklava. Balaclava. What is next? And it allows her to wander around willy-nilly wearing her... Balaclava. 
Happy as Larry in her balaclava. What is next? <laughs> Rich people hunt giraffes and tigers and lions and rhinos. Rich people follow the animals around from jeeps. They stalk them and watch them and raise their guns to the giraffes and tigers and lions and rhinos. They could drink from the river in the burning sun. Bang! I fall asleep on the floor of my bedroom. Uh, there are people in the camp, Alec. Alec. There are people in the camp in Cos. My dreams are infiltrated. There are people in the camp in Bangladesh. My dreams are infiltrated. They've run away from their own countries. They've run away from hunger, war and terror. The people used to live in peace with their grandparents, friends and neighbours. I wake up. They used to sip tea and break bread, smiles and love. They used to bicker about parking spaces and the music that next door played at 3 I have a terrible pain just below my belly they button. They used to sing the old songs and dance to the new songs and laugh about silly things like the way grandma eats pomegranates. There's a trickle the of blood. The children used to go to school and learn their one, two, threes. Then guns and bombs and helicopters arrived. There's a rip in my stomach. The men and women gathered up their children and started to run. They troubled miles with their possessions on their backs. I peel back the skin. The women and children and men are not wanted in the camps of Calais and Cos and Bangladesh. There's an eye. They dream of home. A yellow eye. They dream of grandma eating her breakfast in the pink light of the morning. They dream of banging on the wall at 3 a.m. shouting at the neighbour to turn the music down. A bright yellow eye. There are eye. women and children and men in a different type of camp in the south of France. A bright yellow eye with a thin black They wake people. up in the morning and have croissants and jam. They stretch their legs and yawn in to the glimmering sun. The it blinks up they at me. They think about the day ahead, which will be full of giggles and sandcastles. We look at each and other. And swimming and sun cream and cool bubbly drinks. I think I know what it wants. Grace. Ah, oh, Grace. Him P. Oh, weird. A hundred percent weird. It was after school, and I'd been at science vision. I'd left my coat in the lab, so I was running back to get it, when I saw Grace in an empty classroom. She was sitting there, very alone, sitting very still, very upright, very neat. She was staring into space. I went in, and I asked her, is everything OK, Grace? And she didn't look at me. And I saw something flicker in her eye. The it is flexing its wings. I thought she was going to say something. Stretching its legs. I touched her shoulder. Grooming its fur, or feathers, or scales. She flinched and she got up. I can feel all of its muscles. She went for the door and I grabbed her arm. I can feel its strength. And I said, Grace, tell me what's happening. I can feel its power. She shrugged me off. It is preparing. And I grabbed hold of her blazer. It's nearly ready. I grabbed her and she turned around and pushed me over so hard that I, that I hit my head on the desk. It started to bleed. I'm scared. I said, look what you've done. I'm so scared. She turned around and started to walk away. I shouted, I hate you. And that was the last time I ever saw her. I'm so, so scared. My auntie's friend knows Grace's neighbor. And he told my auntie's friend that when Grace started wearing all those clothes, that the teachers thought she had some special condition, which meant she was cold all the time. Apparently, her parents contacted the school saying she had some autoimmune thing. I have no idea what an autoimmune thing is, but that doesn't matter anyway, because her parents never contacted the school. It was Grace. Grace sent the email pretending to be them. The inside of me is heating up. I can hardly breathe. I can hardly move. I tape up my whole body to make a barrier. I wear a layer of clothes under my school uniform and an old puffer jacket over the top. My mouth is covered, my hands are covered, my head is covered, it cannot get out. I cannot let it get out. My auntie's friend said that Grace's neighbor said that Grace's parents are really nice. He said they're really switched on. I think that means they know what's going on. But they didn't know what was going on. Grace is their daughter, and they didn't know what was going on. Not that I think it's their fault. 
I don't tell my parents a bean about my life. Grace's neighbor said that Grace's parents were devastated. They had no idea what was happening to her. If only they'd known, then that day in PE could have been avoided. They could have helped her or stopped her. Someone should have done something, which I'm sure is true. Someone could have done something, don't you think? I was in PE when it happened. It was totally mental. The whole thing was like madness. It was a boiling hot day and we had a supply teacher. The supply teacher wanted us to run 100 metres. I shouted, that's against our human rights. I'm a joker. Everyone was dressed in shorts and T-shirts, apart from Grace, who was dressed like a colossal nutter. Pulse. She didn't look like a colossal nutter. No, she just looked unusual. Yeah, that's right, unusual. In her unusual apparel. Anyway, we were on the field when it happened, which was as dry as a savannah because of the heat wave. We were all lined up for the first race. Grace was on the other side of me. The supply teacher woman blew her whistle and we all set off. None of us could be asked, So we all just sort of dawdled and chit-chat. The supply teacher woman was a bit of a wild one. You know the sort of teachers that are just a bit unpredictable? The general lack of effort pissed the supply teacher off and she proper showered at us. You're supposed to be competing! The it freezes. Whoever's last gets an attention! So we all just started running. The it darts its head. And then someone shouted something about Janice Levy. Fastest hit from the park! And we all started laughing. The it clenches its jaw. The it arches its scaly back. Its spikes flicker. The it's claws retract and protract. I finished the race and turned back to see if I was last, which I wasn't, which is surprising because running is not my forte. Grace was standing dead still in her lane. The supply teacher was lining up the next race to go. Why I want, want to know is what makes you different from everyone else here. The it opens its beak and bares its teeth. There are women and children and men in an inflatable boat. The it plunges and heaves and dives inside me. The supply teacher spotted Grace and started shouting at her and was all like, but Grace didn't even look at her. Remember, Remember your, your future? future? The it whirls in a fever of blistering heat around my organs. The waves are enormous. Waves are enormous. And the supply waves. teacher was shouting right in Grace's face. Grace was stood still as a statue. It was making the supply teacher so mad. It twists my liver. Grace, are you revising? It snaps at my kidneys. There are people in the camping pallet. It claws at my lungs. Eventually, the supply teacher got fed up and just walked off to the start line and had to go to someone else. There are people in the camping cars. Grace was standing still in the middle of the track, in the middle of the school, on a boiling hot day. There are people in a camp in Bangladesh. You know when you see a dog digging? It's doing that to the soft flesh inside me. The fifth teenage boy to be killed round here. The supply teacher started the next race, but Grace was in the way, so we all pointed at her. The supply teacher just motioned us to go around her. And no one in charge seems to give a toss. I'm filling up with blood. The girl who was running in Grace's lane looked a bit worried about the human obstacle. She said something to the teacher, and she looked like she was about to explode. Just effing run! Just effing run! Instead of cracking up laughing or telling her we were going to report her to the head teacher, we just started effing running. The woman disappears under a crash of foam bubbles. Its talons scratch up at my larynx. I cough up blood. Food banks. Cyclones. Arm stealing. It crushes my heart. But the girl that was running in Grace's lane just swerved a bit too far and she tripped over whoever tripped over whoever, whoever tripped over whoever, and then there was just a big pile of them. Rich people hunt a wrath and tigers and lions and rhinos. It snaps off my ribs and pushes through. The pain. Bang. Eventually, everyone was crying. <laughs> Climate change is a catastrophe in waiting. The pain is... It was so bad. <laughs> the little boy is busted from the exploded building. It burrows its face up through my throat. It was just so funny. <laughs> Banks. I gulped down. Blue I gulped down. Benefit cuts. I gulped down. We were rolling around on the floor in hysterics. It forces my mouth open. The children used to go to school and learn their want of friends. Then guns and bombs and <laughs> Suddenly, there was a noise, like someone had been murdered. Its head rams my teeth. And we all looked at the just effing run supply teacher, but it wasn't her. 
My teeth shatter and crumble from my mouth. That poor boy. That poor, poor boy. My face was standing still in the same position. My cheek split as it hauls itself out of me. Our eyes looked to where she was looking. It was Grace. Your, Your behaviour behavior is completely inappropriate for a young lady. This gaily feet kick at the sides of my throat. Her mouth was wide open. It uses my windpipe as a launch pad. It ain't over till it's over. Her face turned up to the sky. Your, Your future. It wrestles itself out of me. It is slick and wet and covered in blood and pus. Its tail slaps my face as it launches itself into the sky. And her mouth was wide open. Floods, droughts and storms. Its enormous wings unfurl mid-air with blast and yellow and clash. The noise was unbelievable. Desertification and forced migration. The wings are bright green and iridescent. Flecks of fire spin off its scaly body like a Catherine wheel. The noise was so loud. It stinks of fire and demons and rupture and storm. The sky is filled with red and orange and clot and guts. The whole world heats up. The adults in charge run for safety. It's all their fault. The it is coming for them. The noise was terrifying. It was frightening. This hair is mad I'll never forget that. The it blinks its bright yellow eyes. The earth shudders. Wars and starvation. It opens its beak, full of howl. She was... It cuts out the sunlight. She was... We descend into darkness, full of fury and brilliance. She was... And fever and magnificence. She... Bye. The it stops the world with a... They tried to get Grace Fremantle off the school field, but she wouldn't go. It was awful. Eventually, three teachers had to carry her off. They took her to the medical room, and her parents came and put a blanket around her. They carried her off to their car. Her mum was asking her loads of questions, but Grace wasn't saying anything. She did look exhausted, though. Her whole body was sagging, and at one point she stumbled. They had to catch her and hold her up. She didn't come back to school. I don't know where she went. No one knows where she went. I mean, even Sam doesn't know where she went. No one told us anything. Everyone did have different theories about why it happened, though. Exam pressure, eating disorders, drugs, boy trouble, girl trouble, friend trouble, parent trouble. I don't join in. When they're all gossiping and giggling and talking in whispers, I don't say one word. Because when they all saw Grace Fremantle lose her shit on the PE field that day, I saw something different. I probably shouldn't say this, and I'll regret saying it, but I saw it crawl out of her mouth. I saw it open its wings and cover the sky. I saw it open its beak and roar. I saw it shower us with yellow, gold and rust. I saw what was inside of her, the fury, the blood, the gore. I saw it because it's in me too. I know it is. It's just here. It's a presence. A gnawing, a squirming. It's small, like, like a cherry pit. pit. Or a, a baby, baby shrimp. shrimp. Whatever it is, it's really small and it's here. It's definitely a knife's a sticking through my ribs I degrade while you're watching this It's been a sick old time here in my mind, here in my mind.